Pleased to be joined by Alexander Rossi, driver of the number 27 Napa Auto Parts Honda for Andretti Autosport. Pretty good day. I mean, it seems like you took half a day What's off. What's happening at the desk back there? Oh, yeah, it makes you, sense. You don't want to know. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Sorry. Tell us about your days, sir. Yeah, no, it was a good day. Any day out here is a good day for sure. Um, just running through a, a checklist of things to try and understand, um, you know, everything that we learned over the off season and and um, applying it to kind of all five cars in, in different in different ways and, and compiling as much information as we can. Um, that's the advantage about being on a on a big team for for this event. When you have this much practice, you can really kind of divide and conquer. And um, we're, I think we're doing that well so far. It's. Uh, it's all going to change pretty quickly here. I think the, the track conditions are going to be pretty different by the end of the week. Um, so it's hard to really predict what any of this means. And we're just trying to take it day by day and stay on top of it as it changes. You didn't mu run much at all late in the afternoon. Uh, obviously, that, that's part of the plan. The team plan was to let other guys do some of the work later on today. Oh, no, no, it's nothing to do with that. Um, you know, we just had kind of accomplished what we had done. We were really efficient in the first um, two days of our specific checklist on the 27 car. So, um, yeah, we, in terms of our tire plan and everything that we were trying to do, we, we kind of accomplished it, which is great. You don't have many test days where you're actually ahead of schedule. So we'll, uh, we'll take it and uh, get back to work first thing tomorrow morning. I was just going to say that. Uh, you were also, well, I'm sure you're well aware, on top of the no-tow list. What does that mean at this point? Nothing. I mean, it's... It's Wednesday. Um, it's pretty irrelevant. I mean, it's it's good, right? Um, it means I think there's inherent pace in the car, which is always a positive. It's always a, a question mark coming here. Um, you know, we were joking earlier, kind of among the drivers. The drivers are a much smaller equation at a place like this um, in terms of the overall performance, at least in, in single lap pace. It's really down to the, the car and, and the setup that you come up with. So um, it's a positive thing, but still super relevant at this point. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions for Alex. We'll start with Wolfgang back there. Uh, Alex, you said you worked through a couple of things through your checklist. Uh, did you share your information or your engineers with your teammates and engineers of your teammates? And did you maybe also try some stuff from your other teammates if it is working on your car? <laughs> Um, sorry. Um, yes. So it's an it's an open book. So we share we share everything, um, good, bad, indifferent, um, during the day, and especially this evening. If I'm not here for too long, we'll we'll have a big roundtable discussion. It's one of the big things that really surprised me um, the first time that you know I really came here and was driving for Andretti kind of the way that they do that. I don't, I'm don't. i sure other teams do it like this as well. But for me, coming from Europe, it was, it was very different to kind of have all five drivers sit around and be like, oh, yeah, this was my day, and these were the good things. You should try them. So um, it definitely will we'll be doing that this evening and um, you know for the rest of the, of the month, for sure. More questions for Alex? Mary? Um, Alex, uh, you know, this week is uh, a lot of hours of practice. So do you approach as a team a qualifying setup and then switch to a race car setup during the days? Like the temperature might be race day temperature, so you never really know. You might want to try all different things. And yet qualifying, you know, Fast Friday, they're going to up the boost. So how long, my question is, how long does it take to convert the car? Because you, you can get a break then while the con team converts it from qualifying setup to race setup. I mean, it really depends on the year, to be honest. I mean, I've had years where it's, I mean, it, it's at least an hour. And I've had times where it's, you know, you can do it in pit lane. So it really all depends on, on, on the differences, whether it's just aero differences or whether it's mechanical differences or whatever. But I think, you know, everyone, uh, speaking from our car, I mean, we're switching back and forth quite a bit. Um, we'll usually dedicate a morning to, to one and then an afternoon to another and, and vice versa. Um, it's, it's interesting that we run so late, to be honest, considering the race is over at 3.30. So 
um, it's always funny that we do all these group runs at 5.15 and 5.30 when you know, everyone's pretty much home at that point. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very important to, to sum up your question, to work on both. Um, you know, they're, they're usually two very independent cars, your race car and your qualifying car, and you need to make sure that you're comfortable in both, obviously. Dick? Okay. Dick? Uh, you won that first race, the hundredth race, and you know you're a rookie. And what? How hard is it afterwards to become a driver and want to win again? It's not hard at all. Um, <laughs> once you get a taste of it, this one's weird. I, f I feel like other races you win, and it kind of like, of course you you would happily win again. Um, but this one, it's like you you get a small taste of it and the desire ramps up, I think, even more. And you don't want anyone else to be able to experience that and kind of get to celebrate it for the next 12 months. Because that's the special thing about this race is there's every couple of months there's something that's kind of uh, reminding you of your accomplishment and, and ceremonial things. And I think that's very cool. And um, I remember uh, the year at 2017 when Takuma won, like I just stopped looking at his social media because I was jealous. So. It's definitely the desire uh, to win again is, is pretty strong. So it's not hard to, to come back and, and want to do it again. Any final questions before we let Alex go? Go with Jenna, and then we'll let Alex go after this. Alex, I have two completely unrelated questions. Um, cool. So uh, the broadcast today, while you were out running, a, a significant time was spent um, speculating on your future. Oh and boy. so, um, you know, I know that's probably not something that you want to get into, especially during the Indy 500, but I'm just curious um, where you're at. I, I, since people are now starting to say that you may be looking to move. Well, uh, your guess is as good as mine, to be honest. Um, we're, we're just trying to get through this month and get through the year and um, somehow catch this guy to my left. He's had a hell of a start. And I feel like any conversations and, and things about the future are pretty irrelevant and very distracting for the goal of what we're trying to accomplish, and that's to win a championship and to try and get some redemption on what we felt we kind of gave away last year. So that's our, our main focus, my main priority, and I hope that everyone else in the organization is the same way. But this is a contract year? It is, yes. Okay. And then completely unrelated, what happened with your uh, package thief? Nothing, because I didn't file a police report. So apparently the police doesn't investigate things unless you file a report. Uh, but I have to give a shout out to Amazon. Like I called them and they were like, oh yeah, no problem. We'll have a new one to you tomorrow. So the guy, the guy stole an internet router. Like that's the riskiest thing to do. Like the amount of things that myself and my girlfriend order from Amazon that's like paper towels. Like you can go to jail for stealing paper towels. Anyways, <laughs> thanks guys. Have a good day. Thank you, Alex. And with that, we'll turn it over to the, the guy who uh, has had a hell of a season so far, as I believe Alex just said a minute ago. Fastest today in the number two Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Team Penske Chevrolet. Did I get that right? I nailed it. Hey. I, don't, I think you did it better than me. <laughs> Joseph, talk us through your day. Yeah, it was an okay day. I mean, pretty clean uh, for us at least. I, you saw it's not easy. There's a couple of wrecks today. I think that shows you that it's, you know, not – super straightforward to try and get around here even on a practice day. Um, but yeah, for us, I mean, we're just trying to work through our program. I think we need to be a bit better in traffic. Still trying to figure out um, exactly what we need on a race car. That was kind of our focus today. We didn't really do much qualifying sims or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we're trucking forward. I think the shell car feels okay. Uh, it's not a bad start. I'm trying to stay careful with it. You know, I always try and respect this place at the beginning. I never try and push until it's time. Um, you know, just... You, you always got to watch your back around here. You know, she's a, she's a tough place at, at a, a lot of moments. But, um, yeah, so far so good. I'm really, really happy to be here with the group again and, and trying to go for a good month. I think we've got all the capability in the world, so hopefully we can seal off a good Sunday. How hard is it, is it to maybe hold back that little bit when you, you know you want to you wanna go forward and push forward, but you know you have to take it a step at a time and work through the process? No, it's not. I mean, you have so much time. It's, I think it's easy to do that. You know, you just – you have so many sets. Of, you have th 36 sets of tires. It's crazy how much time and tires you have. So I think being methodical is really the wise thing to do. Um, it just works really well, in my opinion. Um, you got you to peak at the right moments. You know, qualifying is very important. It's the, it's, 
there's a time there where you need to go quick. You need to have the car trimmed correctly, and, and it's got to feel good. And then there's a time to push in traffic and, and make something happen in the race. And, and um, yeah, you just you, I think you pick your moments carefully. And it's, um, you know, it's always fun running around here, though. I've, I've been having a blast the last couple of days. All right, let's open it up for questions for our points leader. Anyone? Easy. Super simple. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I got one from George. Joseph, um, obviously the, the name of the game is to win this thing, and um, you haven't won it yet. Just talk about coming over from Penske or in, into Penske now. What's, what, what's the pressure like for you? Uh, honestly, it's the same. Uh, you know, you have pressure when you come here. Everyone wants to do well. Uh, this, is, this is a big event for everybody. You know, it's, it's big for us, obviously, being Team Penske and being the winningest team at the Indy 500. It's, you know, 50 years here at the 500 specifically, which is quite cool. So it's it's uh, there's no doubt there's pressure, but I, honestly, it it doesn't matter what team you're with. I feel the exact same way when I started in 2012 as I do today. You know, you you know that this race counts for everybody. Um, you know, some sponsorships hinge on this place and this month, so uh, it's important for everybody. I don't think it matters what position you're in. It, it everyone knows what it means, and that's why it's so special. Question over here from Steve. Joseph, you said earlier uh, it's tough to follow. Uh, harder than last year, easier, the same? Pretty similar, pretty similar. I think maybe a, maybe a touch easier, but not much. I mean, it, it feels like a very similar car to last year, so I think the race will probably be similar, maybe a bit better. I think there's more downforce we can put on that we're not doing right now, um, which the series has done. Um, so we have more options to work with that might make it easier on race day. It really depends on the heat. If it's a 90, 95 degree day, I think you'll you'll probably see a similar race. If it's 70 degrees, maybe it's probably going to be a bit closer, a bit more packed up. So it really just depends on temperature, in my opinion, at this point. Anything else, up? Mary? Joseph, there are four drivers now on your team. Alio's back. Um, and I would think drivers have different preferences for their setup, slightly different preferences. So do you start out with the same baseline and then try different things and go and see what works and what doesn't? I mean, how, how close is your driving style to the other drivers? Uh, it just depends. Like, we're, we're all a little bit different, but we're not miles away from each other, to be honest. Um, really just preference things like you just stated. There's, there's always little differences, little cueing things that we like small field differences on the way the car turns in, the way it reacts, you know, little things like that. So there's, yeah, there's small differences, but I think we're all in the same ballpark, to be honest, um, which helps. You know, when we're all in the same ballpark, then we can try four different things and come back together and, and talk about it. And it just, you know, accelerates our, our growth throughout a month. So uh, we try and utilize that as best we can at four-car operation. I think it works. You could see it works quite well with, like, a group like Andretti, they have the same sort of situation going. They've got four or five cars over there every year, and, and it just helps accelerate the program when everyone's in a similar window and you can all try something different. Go to Dick, then we'll go to Bruce. Um, during, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, during the race, you have uh, Americans and foreign drivers. So not only do you want to win, but is there a competition any in, in the 33 you know, the Americans against the foreigners and winning that race? Um, probably in some respect, yeah. You know, I've always, uh, I've always taken a lot of pride in being American running this race, but, you know, this race to me would not be what it is if we didn't have the international drivers. You know, you, the whole point of Indianapolis is to bring the best of the best from around the world and to compete at this venue. And, and to me, that's what it's all about, whether it's manufacturers or personnel or drivers. You want to have the best people here running this race. So if it was just Americans, to me, it wouldn't mean nearly as much. Um, I want to win it as an American, but uh, I love that we have, you know, so many different people from around the world in a very diverse paddock. I think it's quite important. But we've got a great crop of Americans, like you stated, so hopefully we've got a good chance to, uh, you know, keep the victory on, on uh, home soil, if you will. Bruce? Two questions. Uh, will yesterday said that he feels a big difference between the uh, way the car handles this year from last year. How much have you felt that, and are you optimistic that uh, there'll be a, it'll be a little more competitive this year, even if it is hot? Uh, you probably probably retalk to him today. He'd have a different different answer for you. I think he feels similar to me. 
uh, in what I just said, where it you know feels similar to last year. But um, I think it's going to come down to temperature. I really do. I think if it's a hot day, you're going to see a similar race. If it's 70 degrees, it'll probably be closer. Also, yesterday, uh, Colton um, had a spin, his first spin at the Speedway. And earlier today, uh, Felix had his first crash. Do you remember your first crash here, your first spin? Was it kind of something that once you had it, it was kind of good to get that out of the way because now you know what the limit is? Yeah, everyone reacts differently. You know, I can't speak for those guys, but certainly, you know, for me, it's a respect thing. I think you learn to respect where, <laughs> where you're at on the track. You can get a soft false sense of confidence around this place really easily. And uh, if, if, uh, if you don't check yourself at one point, it can catch you out in the wrong moment. And uh, so I think it's good for that. That's what it was good for with me. But um, the other guys, I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll reestablish themselves just fine. They're all pros out there, and, and uh, they'll get better from it. You know, that's what this place does. Do you remember when it was and what it was? Mine? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I remember my first – it wasn't a wreck. It was – I remember my first spin – I guess you'd call it a wreck, but it was really, I had 360'd off turn four. I think I was behind Kanan. I was like on a really big tow lap behind Kanan, got a little bit, uh, a bit close to him with too much lock in the wheel and then spun off turn four. I don't think I even really hit anything. I think I just damaged maybe just slightly the front wing, but the car itself was fine. So I got, I got really lucky on my first spin, um, but it just, that teaches you. It teaches you where the limit is, you know, with, with, with traffic running and, you know, how much you can push it. So, yeah, I do remember it. Yeah, 2012, yeah, my first year here. Mm -hmm. right, yep. I'll wrap it up here with George. Obviously, driving in traffic is going to be very important, especially for the race, and the temperature is going to play a lot in that. How has your cars handled, you specifically, and your team's handled so far in the practice session? Uh, I think we're, like, halfway there. You know, the car's okay, but it's not – it's it's by no means perfect at the moment. Um, I think we need to be a little bit better at following in a deep pack – you know, it's one thing to follow one car or two cars, but once you get 15 cars back, it becomes very difficult. And that's where we need to be better, um, is in a really, really deep pack. The idea is to qualify up front and stay up front. But, look, you have to have a car capable of coming through the field. If something happens and you get put back there, you've got to be able to come back to the front. So that's why we work on it. Um, but, yeah, I think we're, we're about halfway there, taking baby steps. Day two feels okay, but we need to be a little closer. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for the day. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you.